screen. There we go. Good morning, everyone. I'm Darlene Encomio from the Martin County Library System. We are here today for our very special 1000 Black Girl Books Book Club. We had our um, book club read a very special book called Serena Says by our author Tanita S. Davis, who we have here today. So I'd like to introduce to you Tanita, who holds a Master of Fine Arts from Mills College. She fed her love for traveling when she moved to Glasgow, Scotland in 2007. She now lives in Northern Arizona in a yurt and makes cheese. Hmm. Tanita serves on the board of the Children's and Young Adult Bloggers Literary Awards, better known as the Sibyls. Her short fiction can be found in Hunger Mountain and Cicada magazines. Her occasional truths, frequent lies, and very <laughs> random observations can be found on Twitter at Tanita underscore S underscore Davis. Without further ado, I'd like us to give a big round of applause for Miss Tanita S. Davis. Woohoo! All right. Welcome, welcome from California. Yes, yeah, so you did know that the yurt and the Arizona and the cheese was a lie. Oh, <laughs> sadly, I, I have never made, you know, never lived in a yurt, but um, good morning readers. And I'm glad to see so many of you. And I am also really impressed that this is your first um, book club and you guys are already in there and reading all the books. And uh, I hope that you're able to continue to be a part of this. Um, thank you for sending me your questions. It's, it's seven o'clock in the morning here. So in order for me to be coherent and actually awake, I had to have the questions ahead of time. <laughs> but um, I'm just going to start from the top and go down. The first question that I got was, who inspired you to write books? Um, my mother kind of did and kind of didn't. Because I was the youngest of three kids at the time. My parents adopted two more kids later, but so I was the youngest at the time and I talked so much. My mother was like, here, and she handed me a pad of paper and a pencil and she's like, sit down and write down everything you wanna tell me. Let's all have quiet for a while. Cause I kind of drove her crazy and she was home all day with me. And so when I was really little, she's the first person who inspired me to write. The second question was, how old were you when you started writing books? Well, when I started writing books that were um, publishable, I was just graduated from college. So I was 23 and it was my first year of teaching. But when I first started writing any books at all, I was 13 and I wrote this really, really long book about this boy I liked and we were going to be detectives and there was many adventures and they were, it was pretty terrible. If I look back at it now, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but that was my first book. And, and apparently I was going to be a detective and find, I don't know, lost pets. It, it was many years ago. We'll just draw a veil. Um, the second time that I started writing books though, I was teaching school, it was my first summer um, and I had had so much fun teaching. I missed my students every day. So I started writing down stories to tell them. And that was the first book that I published. It was about summer camp and all the things that my students were doing in an imaginary summer that they may be, they might have been having. So the second or third question is, what inspired you to write Serena Says? Well, I was watching something on TV and I saw a girl named Jojo. Now, Jojo was really popular. This was like when she was 11. She's, I believe, 18 now. And it, her last name is S-I-W-A, Siwa or something. She was very popular. She was on all the talk shows. She was everywhere. And she had this giant bow in her hair. Um, that was like her sort of claim to fame, you know, the hair thing. She was doing videos on YouTube. She had like a little channel and she'd made slime. I guess she was on, I don't remember what talk show it was. And she was so cute and all loud and blonde and everything. And I was like, oh, you know, look at that. All these girls are, you know, doing this YouTube thing and they're becoming content creators and they're getting out there and they're doing this thing. But I looked around and I noticed that it, there was most of the time 
there weren't girls who were people of color. There were not a lot of African-American girls, not a lot of black girls, not a lot of brown girls out there. And I said, I wonder why. And so when I wrote, Serena says, I thought, you know, I want to write a book about a girl who is doing this just so when other girls have the idea that they want to do this, there'll be a book about it and there'll be somebody else who did it too. Um, the next question is, where were you when you wrote the book? Which is an interesting question because, you know, after all my lies about living in Arizona and a yurt, um, I was actually um, in my house, I started this book because books take a long time, you know, between the ideas sometimes when you actually do it. So we moved two times and um, so I was just in a bedroom in the back of my house. I don't write anywhere else. I don't have an office. I don't go to coffee shops because other music and, and noise, I have to be really focused. So it was just in the back bedroom of my house. I try to be in the same room every time, put it some headphones in so just to make sure I can focus I know a lot of you probably do homework the same way um the next question someone had was was the story Serena says about you or about a random person well that's always a good question because there's almost never a story that a writer tells that's completely out of the air about somebody fake it's almost always a little bit about people you know, that one lady you saw in the Kroger's as the other lady who was at after school care, you know, and then your dad's Aunt Brenda. It's always just a little bit of pieces, little bits and pieces here and there. So in a way, Serena says is about a random person, but in a way it's also about me because I was a little bit quiet when I was in school, when I wasn't at home talking my mother's ear off. And, um, I had a lot of friends who were louder than me and it took a lot of work for me to learn how to say no or hey I want to do this or, this or that and not just go along with the crowd that for some people takes practice. So the next question was what inspired you to write about JC getting her kidney transplant now. Um, when I told you that I was the youngest I was but then my parents adopted two more kids and my youngest sister's name is Jessica. Christina. And she was born, um, her mom had some problems and did some drugs, and she was born with some health problems. And when she was a sophomore in high school, her kidney started to fail. And so then the next couple of years were her missing out on school trips and missing out on classes. She had to go to dialysis in the, in the middle of the day. And it was a lot. And then her senior year, she got put to the top of the transplant list and she had that big long surgery and they put a kidney in her and the whole nine. And um, it was hard for her because you know her friends went on and did things and she didn't get to know what was going on if she missed a lot of classes. And so even though she was supposed to be getting well, you know, she also kind of had, you know, a little bit of homeschool where, you know, teachers would be calling and saying, how are you doing on this? Do you feel well enough to turn this in? And it was, it, it took her a long time to get all her work in. So that's the first part of it. And I, the, the second part of it was, I don't think I'd ever read a book, a more any way, a recent book about a girl who had a health problem like that. Um, the next question was, why did you name the book Serena Says? Well, I didn't at first. What was funny was that Ms. Darlene said Serena Speaks at first, and that is in fact one of the names that I came up with. I love to name things, but my editor does not always think I do a great job naming things, so we go back and forth. I'll come up with a name, and she'll come up with a name, and we look at each other and go, hmm. So, I used to call the book Radio Stella because way back in the beginning, the main character was Stella and she wanted to work a radio station. Now, nowadays there are, you know, that's something that's not a job that a lot of people do, you know, in real life anymore. They record stuff and then they play it on the, on the radio station. So it's not like you're 
right there. But, you know, but podcasts are a thing that people like to do and people make podcasts at home and stuff. So I was thinking about that. But so then the first title of the book that I came up with was Stella Speaks. But then the book Stella Diaz Has Something to Say by Angela Dominic, Dom, okay, now I can't say her name, Dominguez came out and she wanted that I didn't want to have a book where there were two Stellas coming out close to the same time. And her book is really great. And so I wanted to make sure people, you know, paid attention to that. So I changed the Stella to Sarah. But then I thought about my friend Serena. Now my friend Serena, when she, I w wrote my first book, she had her first little girl and she's like, oh, you have to write a book and name it after my daughter. And then she years later her daughter went to school and graduated from school and and um and her son you know went to school and graduated and now he has a little girl of his own and she says oh now you have to write a book about my grandbaby and name it after her but what i decided was that she never asked for herself so that is why the book is titled serena says and not sarah because it was it's for my friend serena um those are the questions that you guys asked and they were pretty, I gave you pretty short answers because I wanted to give you a little chance to, if you had other questions that you wanted to ask me just off the top of your heads now, or if you wanted me to explain something a little more, or if you wanted me to talk a little bit about how books get published or how I started writing books or anything like that, that you have an opportunity to do so um, right now. Anybody got questions? Viviana? Um, you got to speak up. You got to speak, speak, speak up. When you were talking about the Diddy thing, were you speaking up like her or her mom? Like your sister or your, your sister's mom? Can you hear her? I heard part of it. Try again. Um, wait. <laughs> When you were when you were talking about that uh, Kenny thing, were you talking about your sister's mom or your sister? Oh no, I was talking about my sister. Yeah, she. Um, I guess there were a lot of things, and I don't understand them because I'm not a doctor. But there was a lot of things that happened when her her birth mom did some drugs, and it caused some weaknesses in her system for whatever reason, and you know when she was born you know she was sick for a long time and then we all thought everything was going to be fine and then it wasn't so it, it's not the end of the world there are people i know probably some of you know people who are sick and you have to do the dialysis thing the dialysis and do all of that but a lot of times they're older people and so you don't hardly know anybody who's in you know high school or junior high who has anything like that happen but it happened to my sister and I just wanted to put that out there in a book so that if it happened to somebody else, they wouldn't think that it was only them. Excellent. Did it happen for real in real life? Did I have what? Did it happen for real in real life? Yeah, it sure did. Mm -hmm. It's still okay now? Yeah, she's okay now. What happens with kidneys is that, you know, sometimes when you get a kidney transplant, now people who don't know anything about it, we think, okay, that's it, one and done. You don't ever have to get another one. But a donated kidney, that's not the one you were born with. Sometimes it only lasts 10 years. And so she is going to have to do it again. And I didn't know that. <laughs> I thought, oh, yay, she's done, it's all good, and she's gonna go off and everything will be fine. And that's not the case. You really do have to take drugs for a lot of your life so that your body does not reject the part that you weren't born with. And that messes up your immune system. So when you get a thing like a virus come through, you have to wear a mask way after, way before everybody else and way after everybody else. And it's, it's a lot, but she will be fine. I see somebody else is raising their hand. Does she have kids? No, not yet, because she's just barely 22. 
And she said, give her a minute. But do you know oh, what? Okay. She will be able to have kids. If that's your next question, she'll be all right. She'll be able to have kids and be normal like everybody else if she wants to. Okay. Does she live with us? One, uh, one of them had a question. She said, does she live with you? No, she doesn't live with me. Um, she lives with my mom and dad in her own little place in the house. That is one thing. It's, it's a little bit harder when, you know, you were getting ready to, to be at the end of your school time and then all this happens, you know, she, she has just been able, well, before the pandemic anyway, she's just been able to, you know, get a job and be doing all that stuff because she had, you know, she had to take longer to get through high school and then, you know, after you've been sick like that, sometimes you don't know what to do with yourself. You know, you, do, you don't make long-term plans. You think, you know, am I going to be okay? And so it was hard for her to dream about her future. So she finally got all that together and then we got a pandemic. But, you know, it is what it is. She'll be fine. Ms. Davis, I have a question for you. Um, do you have any projects that you're working on right now that you would like to share with us? I do. Um, right now, I'm working on a book um, that is going to come out not this year, but September of next year. And um, it is about a girl named Henrietta. She's named after Henrietta Lacks, the lady who gave her cells for science. And people didn't even ask her before they did all sorts of things with her cells. But her mom is a, a person who likes science. And so she named her daughter Henrietta. And Henrietta has a problem with math. It's called dyscalculia, or people call it basically math dyslexia. And she has never been able to have an easy time telling time on a clock or counting change. And so she's working on going to regular public school instead of private school, where she's trying to mainstream in school and be like everybody else and get used to all the things that are in regular school. And she's trying to do her math and, you know, rise and succeed like everybody else. So she's learning, you know, the things she can do and the things that are harder and she's going to succeed anyway. And I'm writing that book because I have dyscalculia and it took me a long time to learn to tell time. I could, I could recite my times tables, but I didn't know what they meant. They didn't mean anything to me. It was just, it was like a song. I could say all the things I could say it in a beat. You know, but it wasn't like it wasn't a math fact that stuck in my head. And I had to, you know, it, I didn't know for a long time there was anything. I thought it was just I was bad at math, but it wasn't just bad at math. And so um, I'm writing this for all the people who think that they're bad at math and to let them know that sometimes it's not something that's in your control, but you can still do your best and rise and succeed in other ways. That's great. We look forward to that. Um, I, think, well, I think we have someone that has a question. Janelle, what did you ask her? I, I was asking that she, like, would she need, like, a little special help to do, like, you do certain things? Or, like, do she need, like, special help to do certain things? Or is she um, able to do everything on her own? Oh, um, you're talking about my sister? Um. She doesn't need special help. She, she just has to stay, um, you know, you got to keep up with your doctor appointments and all of that. But otherwise, her, you know, you know, and she has to take her medication. And you, if you mess around and, and you stop taking it and believe that everything is fine, your body will remind you, no, it is not. So otherwise, she is, you know, she's a, a person who, you know, She's going to have her own, you know, her own car, her own apartment, just like everybody else, you know. All right. I think we have time for maybe one final question. You got another question or no? Oh, I think that might be it for the question. Okay. Um, if wait, she said, did anybody make any comments? Of, wait, any, what you said, Chastity? Does anyone make, like, any comments, like, in public or something? Does she look different or does she look the same? She probably looked the same. 
Yeah, she looks the same. All right. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think that's about it. That's thank, all right. you. thank you, girls. Um, I um, would love to be able to find out how we can find out more about your upcoming projects. Um, where is the best place to follow you? Oh, um, I have a website that's tanitasdavis.com. And all of the next books I put, if it, the book, I have another book coming out in September, I put the cover on the, the first page of there and you can see it there. I'm also, you know, sometimes on Instagram, sometimes on Twitter. I'm not always, you know, I have a lot of different things, but you can find all of the links to all of that right on tanitasdavis.com. Excellent. All right. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us and our Thousand Black Girl Books book club. Um, again, this was our final uh, book club. We're going to um, stop the recording in just a minute, um, but we want to um, thank you again. And we were very excited to be able to launch this for the first time. And we're very excited to be able to continue this um, in the fall with two more groups. Um, the girls from uh, Banner Lake Academy and Blast and Miss Simone and Miss Marcaya, we had a wonderful time with them. We're going to ask them to hang on with us so that we can celebrate um, the, this joyous occasion. And uh, we look forward to chatting with you some more in our upcoming book clubs, Miss Davis. All right. Thank you. Good morning, you all. Have a good day. And I will see you again. Bye. Bye. Bye.